Hey guys, John G. Adams, Modern Design Aquascaping, back again to educate and inspire the world about ponds and water features. Today's video is a pond showcase video, but it's gonna be a little different than what you've been seeing because we're gonna educate a little more while we're doing the construction process. And I'm gonna flash you back 18 months, which means you're also gonna get to see what it looks like over a year later with plants and underwater footage and fish and all that other good stuff. So let's do a time warp back to 2019. <laughs> no, no. So I just rode out here with my wife. We're getting ready to start the cook job on the day after Labor Day. And we just drove over the mountain to Grandview, Tennessee. Look at the sun setting behind me. I just can't tell you how excited I am. Look at the freaking boulders. I mean, oh my gosh, look at the rocks behind me. Absolutely gorgeous. I come up here and hand pick our rocks for every job because that's what makes the difference between a pretty good job and an awesome water feature. I just couldn't resist. One more rock I gotta show you and we'll get back on the road. 1,400 pounds. Look at the moss. Beautiful moss. Lichens growing all over on the side of this guy. Look at this rock. I had to have it. One more. I'm gonna take this stone and I'm gonna stand it right up. And it is gonna be the focal point that makes one of the corners of the pond. Absolutely beautiful. This is going to be an amazing water feature. Check this out. Today we are here in beautiful Teleco Village which is in East Tennessee near Knoxville. And you can see the front of the Cook's house. We are getting ready to do an amazing overhaul of their water feature. So let me take you over here and give you a walkthrough of what they have and what they're gonna get when we're through. Come on. Look at this. We've got the old skimmer. We've got the old waterfall. The view from the house in there is out this way. So the waterfall is pointing towards the street. I'm not sure what that's all about, but we've got kind of a bowl shaped pond here and we've got a lot of small stones. The issues were all little rocks were rolling into the bottom. She was having a hard time walking around the edges and they decided maybe it was time for an upgrade. We got a Aquascape 2500 biofalls over there. That thing's going out of here. We've got the old skimmer box over here. We've had a new upgrade on that. That guy's out of here. We're gonna dig the sides more vertically. We're gonna make use of the space that we have. We're gonna do a little more shaping and create some shelves. We're gonna bring that edge back here. We're gonna put in a 6,000 series biofalls, which is much bigger on the backside. And we're gonna aim the waterfall at the house. So those guys can look out the windows and sit on the porch and really enjoy the view of what we're getting ready to do. We're gonna put aeration in the corner over here. All the bells and whistles, even color changing lights are gonna go into this water feature. It's gonna be stupid cool when the guys get done. You might have got a little on you. Yeah, just a little. What do you think that is all over you? Uh, it's most likely feces. Fish feces, <laughs> frog feces, bacterial feces. <laughs> This is actually how we put in a more, what I would call a custom skimmer installation. We'll follow how this all goes together so that you guys can feel more comfortable putting in an advanced plumbing system on an Aquascape's 1000 series signature series skimmer. Okay, let's go here. So there's a dimple in the middle of the back of this guy and that shows you where to drill out when you're gonna put a second pump into this skimmer. I don't like to go over about 8,000, 8,500 gallons per hour on this skimmer. It's rated for a little more than that, but I prefer to not max it out. But this dimple is at just the right height so that you can use your hole saw to drill in another one of these bulkhead fittings into the back of your skimmer. What that's gonna allow you to do is it's gonna allow you to move your overflow. You know, the standard skimmer comes with two holes in the back of it. One of them goes to your pump, obviously. 
The other one is your overflow pipe. So this little snorkel guy lets you adjust your water level once you've got it all put together. We're gonna move this to center space and we're gonna use three holes in the back of the skimmer so that we can have two pipes going out. So we're going our main waterfall pump is a Surumi 5 and that's about a 5,000 gallon per hour pump that requires us to use a two inch plumbing line. You could actually use a three inch plumbing line if you want to really max it out. But what you want to do is you want to know how to pick the right pump for your head pressure. So if you don't know how to do that, get your supplier to figure out what the right pump is, what the right plumbing size is for the flow that you're trying to get. It's based on your run. It's based on your lift. It's based on the type of plumbing that you use. There's a lot of factors that go into that. You can search total dynamic head on the internet if you want to figure out how to do that equation. So this side is going to our main waterfall. This side is an inch and a half pipe. We've actually got an Aquascapes adjustable speed, two to 4,000 gallon per hour pump. That second pump is gonna go over here. We have some heron statues that are gonna go into the side over here. And then we're gonna take the rest of the flow from that second pump. We're gonna run it around the back and we're gonna put some jets in for circulation. Now this is a really advanced feature for such a small space, but I think you guys are gonna enjoy watching how all the plumbing comes together and how we hide it. So we've got some also, we've, this is inch and a half, this is two inch. We also have some one inch flexible pipe of the same material. That's a schedule 40 flex tubing. And uh, we're gonna use the one inch once we get inside the pond to run our jets. So you guys follow how all this happens. And uh, if you have any questions, hit us up in the comment section down there. We'd be glad to help you work through designing your water feature so that you can get maximum circulation and filtration in your waterfall. You see a lot of people that just come in and start throwing fittings on. And when you learn about hydraulics and the dynamics of your water flow, you're gonna find out real quick that every time you put a fitting in, you get less water out the top. So you want to use as few fittings as possible. This is our line that feeds our jets and our heron spitters. I ran it out of the way, so there's still room to get some landscaping in here. I've got it down low enough for some plants to be put in, but there are no elbows on that guy. This is our line that goes to our waterfall. You can see these are both run in here, smooth curves. Everything's good. I am not gonna put any extra fittings on those. We are gonna get as much flow out of our water feature as we can with as little electricity as much water flow and that's about not using a lot of fittings. So think about that when you're putting it together. Let me show you the overflow. This snorkel runs to my overflow pipe. The centerpiece is my overflow, guys. This is the snorkel. Let me tell you something about water. Water runs downhill. Remember that, it's a very important key in putting in an overflow because every time I redo a water feature, I pull out the old overflow and amazingly enough, those guys know how to make their water run uphill. I want you all to make your water go downhill, which is why you see these tools back here that we've used. We set our water flow downhill out of the bulkhead. So we actually have a drop in the water to get to the pipe and then the pipe runs down from here. I don't care how far you have to go out the other end to the end of your overflow. What you want to do, is you want to use a laser and a level and you want to put it on your pipe as you bury it in here. You can see my team just spent a couple hours digging this hole out all the way back through here and making sure that it runs downhill from the skimmer to out into the yard. So you can pour water into the snorkel and it runs out the end. You don't want bellies in there where it can freeze during the winter time. You want it to be a nice steady flow all the way out so that your overflow works properly. When you get a heavy rain, the water runs into the overflow and out the other end. That's how that guy needs to be. It's a little extra work to do it right, but do it right, I'm just saying. guys, John G, Modern Design Aquascape, and I'm checking in for Tristan this morning. I just wanted to give you a walk around our job site, let you see what's going on. It is officially day five out here in Teleco Village. We had two days of teardown and getting the fish moved out, and today is day three of construction. So we blew the pond out and uh, rocked in the back half of it. And then Friday, the team was uh, finishing digging it out while I was running around gathering up some materials so we can get busy this week. But ooh, the sun's bright up there, guys. So that's... Uh, 16 by 14 pond we got going back here. There's 
some of the new rocks. That biggest boulder we put in right there, that guy was 1,500 pounds. He's the biggest rock going into this pond. This is actually uh, 16 or no, it was 17 feet wide and 14 feet deep from front to back and the waterfall is going to go right here. I'm super stoked about that. We should be building waterfall tomorrow. I came out here yesterday while the team was resting and did some cool stuff on our fish tubs. This is where we keep our, uh, our fish happy while we're doing the rebuild. These guys have had these fish for years. Look how nicely the water's cleaned up. I've spent uh, most of the day yesterday working on a YouTube video that explains how we care for the fish while we're doing a, a pond renovation. And I hope that one brings some value out to uh, anybody out there who has the potential to take care of fish while they're doing a rebuild. But I'm going to quit yakking and start building. So you guys uh, have a great one. Have a great day. Have a great week. I wish I could show you the river out there. <laughs> There's Tristan's exit stage right, so we can officially get to work, man. You all have a great one. Peace out. This is one of the things we use for our little fountain pieces. So this is a, a inch and a half coupling basically on both ends that you can cut into the middle of the pipe and then it's got a three quarter inch female pipe thread right here. Then we just keep a variety of these three quarter inch barb fittings. This is a three quarter by a three quarter, this is a three quarter by a half inch. You can get a three quarter by a one inch so that no matter what size your flexible tubing is going to these various fountains that you'll use, you really only have to have a couple of fittings in your trailer to get it right. I'll literally just screw it in here and I'll glue this in line between the pump and the ball valve. And we'll show you how we do the advanced plumbing on the biofalls so that you have an easy drain on the bottom of it that'll make maintenance a snap. So stay tuned for that. ran a 90 here we actually added two 90s to the equation which adds two feet of head pressure but it kept us from going through the liner with a hole we didn't have to bulkhead through so we go over here the inch and a half comes up behind the liner it comes up and it goes over behind this boulder we then wedged it in behind that boulder and out i put the t in right there with the fitting that goes off to the herons our second 90 allows us to wrap that plumbing tight around the back of the fish cave and then by filling this up with gravel up to that height, we're going to pour just a little more over. It'll spread the weight of that next boulder out so it doesn't crush our pipe. The ball valve is right there, so we'll be able to adjust that later. And what that will allow us to do is to close that off and blow stuff through the herons. So if the herons start to get clogged up, we'll be able to close that, put all of the pump pressure out through the herons. That'll make the herons work better make them easier to clean and then when we open that back up the rest of the pressure goes this way and comes out to the two jets that we installed prior one in the bottom right there one in the side over here so we got this one angling up that'll create a surface flow that goes to the skimmer box and we got the other one down here in the bottom that'll create a bottom flow to sweep the bottom off towards the skimmer box and that's the plans with the jets and then of course we have aeration hiding back here there's the neoprene diffuser right back here in the back we're having electricity put in way over there for the neoprene diffuser so that you can't hear the hum of the aerator. But we've got all the bells and whistles on this bad boy.
So guys, this is it for my introduction to Ampron's Oasis. Do me a favor. If you got anything out of this video, if you liked it, throw me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, throw me a thumbs down. Just throw me some kind of thumb. Interact, questions or comments, put them down there in the comment section. I'll talk back and forth with you about it. And uh, you know, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, what's wrong with you? Just do it. Hit the subscribe button. Seriously, I'm out of here. I got nothing else to say to you. Yeah.